Section 2, Interpreting the Results of a Factorial Experiment. The learning objectives for this section are, 1. Distinguish between main effects and interactions, and recognize and give examples of each. 2. Sketch and interpret bar graphs and line graphs, showing the results of studies with simple factorial designs. And 3. Distinguish between main effects and simple effects, and recognize when an analysis of simple effects is required. Graphing the results of factorial experiments. The results of factorial experiments with two independent variables can be graphed by representing one independent variable on the x-axis horizontally and representing the other by using different colored bars or lines. The y-axis is always reserved for the dependent variable. Figure 9.3 shows results for two hypothetical factorial experiments. The top panel shows the results of a 2 by 2 design. Time of day, day versus night, is represented by different locations on the x-axis, and cell phone use, no versus yes, is represented by different colored bars. It would also be possible to represent cell phone use on the x-axis and time of day as different colored bars. The choice comes down to which way seems to communicate the results most clearly. The bottom panel of figure 9.3 shows the results of a 4 by 2 design in which one of the variables is quantitative. This variable, psychotherapy length, is represented along the x-axis and the other variable, psychotherapy type, is represented by differently formatted lines. This is a line graph rather than a bar graph because the variable on the x-axis is quantitative with a small number of distinct levels. Line graphs are also appropriate when representing measurements made over a time interval, also referred to as a time series information, on the x-axis. Main effects. In factorial designs, there are three kinds of results that are of interest. Main effects, interaction effects, and simple effects. A main effect is the effect of one independent variable on the dependent variable, averaging across the levels of the other independent variable. Thus, there's one main effect to consider for each independent variable in the study. The top panel of figure 9.3 shows a main effect of cell phone use because driving performance was better, on average, when participants were not using cell phones than when they were. The loop blue bars are, on average, higher than the red bars. It also shows a main effect of time of day, because driving performance was better during the day than during the night, both when participants were using cell phones and when they were not. Main effects are independent of each other in the sense that whether or not there's a main effect of one independent variable says nothing about whether or not there's a main effect of the other. The bottom panel of figure 9.3, for example, shows a clear main effect of psychotherapy length. The longer the psychotherapy, the better it worked. Interactions. There's an interaction effect, or just an interaction, when the effect of one independent variable depends on the level of another. Although this may seem complicated, you already have an intuitive understanding of interactions. As an everyday example, Assume your friend asks you to go to a movie with another friend. Your response to her is, well, it depends on which movie you're going to see and who else is coming. You really want to see the big blockbuster summer hit, but have little interest in seeing the cheesy romantic comedy. In other words, there's a main effect of type of movie on your decision. If your decision to go to see either of these movies further depends on who she's bringing with her, then there's an interaction. For example, if you'll go see the cheesy romantic comedy if she brings her hot friend you want to get to know better, but you won't go to that movie if she brings anybody else, then there's an interaction. Drug interactions are another good illustration of everyday interactions. Many older men take Viagra to assist them in the bedroom, and many men take nitrates to treat angina or chest pain. So each of these drugs is beneficial on its own. That is, they have main effects on each, or each of them have main effects on older men's well-being. But the combination of those two drugs can be lethal. In other words, there's a very important interaction between Viagra and heart medication that older men need to be aware of to prevent their untimely demise. Now let's consider some examples of interactions from research. 
It probably wouldn't surprise you to hear that the effect of receiving psychotherapy is stronger among people who are highly motivated to change than among people who are not motivated to change. This is an interaction because the effect of one independent variable, whether or not they receive psychotherapy, depends on the level of another, their motivation to change. Schnall and her colleagues also demonstrated an interaction because the effect of whether the room was clean or messy on participants' moral judgments depended on whether the participants were low or high in private body consciousness. If they were high in private body consciousness, then those in the messy room made harsher judgments. If they were low in private body consciousness, then whether the room was clean or messy didn't matter. In many studies, the primary research question is about an interaction. The study by Brown and her colleagues was inspired by the idea that people with hypochondriasis are especially attentive to any negative health-related information. This led to the hypothesis that people high in hypochondriasis would recall negative health-related words more accurately than people low in it, but they would recall non-health-related words about the same as people low in hypochondriasis. And of course, this is exactly what happened in the study. Types of interactions. The effect of one independent variable can depend on the level of the other in several different ways. First, there can be spreading interactions. An example of a spreading interaction is shown on the left and can be seen in the top two panels of figure 9.4 from the textbook shown in the middle. In the top panel of 9.4, independent variable B has an effect at level one of independent variable A. And we can see this because there's a difference in the height of the blue and the red bars on the left side of the graph. However, there was no effect at level two of independent variable A, which we can see by the fact that there's no difference in the heights of the blue and the red bars on the right side of the graph. This is much like the study of Schnall and her colleagues, where there was an effect of disgust for those high in private body consciousness, but not for those low in private body consciousness. In the middle panel, independent variable B has a stronger effect at level one of independent variable A than at level two. We can see this because there's a larger difference in the height of the blue and the red bars on the left side of the graph than there is between the two bars on the right side of the graph. This is like the hypothetical driving example where there was a strong effect of using a cell phone at night and a weaker effect of using a cell phone during the day. So to summarize, for spreading interactions, there's an effect of one independent variable at one level of the other independent variable, but there's a weak effect or no effect of the in, that independent variable at the other level of the other independent variable. The second type of interaction that can be found is a crossover interaction, which is depicted both on the right and in the bottom panel of figure 9.4 from the textbook. In 9.4, in the bottom panel, the independent variable B again has an effect at both levels of independent variable A. We can see that on the left side there's a difference between the two bars and on the right side there's a difference between the two bars. But the effects are in opposite directions. The bar on the left side, the red bar is the tall bar, whereas on the right side, the blue bar is the tall bar. Another example of a crossover interaction comes from a study by Kathy Gilliland on the effect of caffeine on the verbal test scores of introverts and extroverts. Introverts perform better than extroverts when they haven't ingested any caffeine, but extroverts performed better than introverts when they ingested four milligrams of caffeine per kilogram of body weight. Figure 9.5 shows examples of these same kinds of interactions when one of the independent variables is quantitative and the results are plotted in a line graph. Note that the top two figures depict the two kinds of spreading interactions that can be found while the bottom figure depicts a crossover interaction where the two lines literally cross over each other. Simple effects. When researchers find an interaction, it suggests that the main effects may be a bit misleading. Think of the example of a crossover interaction where introverts were found to perform better on a test of verbal test performance than extroverts when they hadn't ingested any caffeine, but extroverts were found to perform better than introverts when they had ingested four milligrams of caffeine 
per kilogram of body weight. So in other words, with no caffeine, the introverts perform better. With caffeine, the extroverts perform better. To examine the main effect of caffeine consumption, so caffeine or no caffeine, the researchers would have averaged across the introversion and ext extroversion groups and simply looked at whether overall those who ingested caffeine had better or wor worse verbal memory test performance. Because the positive effect of caffeine on extroverts would be wiped out by the negative effects of caffeine on the introverts, then no main effect of caffeine consumption would have been found. Similarly, to examine the main effect of personality, the researchers would have averaged across the levels of the caffeine variable to look at the effects of personality, introversion versus extroversion, independent of caffeine. In this case, the positive effects of extroversion in the caffeine condition would be canceled out by the negative effects of extroversion in the no caffeine condition. So does the absence of any main effects mean there's no effect of caffeine and there's no effect of personality? No, of course it doesn't. The presence of the interaction indicates that the story is more complicated, that the effects of caffeine on verbal test performance depend on personality. This is where simple effects come into play. Simple effects are a way of breaking down the interaction to figure out precisely what is going on. An interaction simply informs us that the effects of at least one independent variable depend on the level of at least one other independent variable. Whenever an interaction is detected, researchers need to conduct additional analyses to follow up to determine where that interaction is coming from. Of course, one may be able to visualize and interpret the interaction on a graph, but a simple effects analysis provides researchers with a more sophisticated means of breaking down the interaction. Specifically, a simple effects analysis allows researchers to determine the effects of each independent variable at each level of the other independent variable. So while the researchers would average across the two levels of personality variable to examine the effects of caffeine on verbal test performance in a main effects analysis, for a simple effects analysis, the researchers would examine the effects of caffeine in introverts and then examine the effects of caffeine in extroverts separately. So a main effect would average across the two groups, just everybody who had caffeine versus no caffeine. Whereas a simple effects analysis would look at the effect of caffeine in the introverts and the effect of caffeine in the extroverts separately. As we saw previously, the researchers also examined the effects of personality in the no caffeine condition and found that in this condition, introverts perform better than extroverts. Finally, they examined the effects of personality in the caffeine condition and found that extroverts perform better than introverts in that condition. For a two by two design like this, there would be two main effects the researchers could explore and four simple main effects. So the two main, sorry, four simple effects. The two main effects would be the effect of personality, extroversion versus introversion, and the main effect of caffeine, no caffeine versus yes caffeine. The four simple effects analyses that would happen would be the effect of caffeine for introverts, the effect of caffeine for extroverts, the effect of introversion in the caffeine group, and effect of introversion in the non-caffeine group. Right? So there would be a four in total. Schnall and colleagues found a main effect of disgust on moral judgments, since those in the messy room made harsher moral judgments. However, they also discovered an interaction between private body consciousness and disgust. In other words, the effect of disgust depended on private body consciousness. The presence of this interaction suggests the main effect may be a bit misleading. That is, it's not entirely accurate to say that those in a messy room made harsher moral judgments because that was only true for half of the participants. Using simple effects analyses, they were able to determine further that for people high in private body consciousness, there is an effect of disgust on moral judgments, but for people low in body consciousness, 
there was no effect of disgust on moral judgments. By examining the effect of disgust at each level of body consciousness using simple effects analyses, Schnall and colleagues were able to better understand the nature of the interaction. As described previously, Brown and colleagues found an interaction between type of words, health-related or not, and hypochondriasis, high or low, on word call. To break down this interaction using simple effects analyses, they examined the effect of hypochondriasis at each level of word type. Specifically, they examined the effect of hypochondriasis on recall of health-related words, and then they subsequently examined the effect of hypochondriasis on recall of non-health-related words. They found that people high in hypochondriasis were able to recall more health-related words than people who were low in it, but in contrast, there was no effect of hypochondriasis on the recall of non-health-related words. Once again, examining simple effects provides a means of breaking down the interaction, and therefore it's only necessary to conduct these analyses when an interaction is present. When there's no interaction, then the main effects will tell the complete and accurate story. To summarize, rather than averaging across the levels of the other independent variable, as is done in a main effects analysis, simple effects analyses are used to examine the effects of each independent variable at each level of the other independent variables. So a researcher using a two by two design with four conditions would need to look at two main effects and four simple effects. A researcher using a two by three design with six conditions would need to look at two main effects, one for each independent variable, and five simple effects. Whereas a researcher who is using a three by three design with nine total conditions would need again to look at two main effects, one for each independent variable, and six simple effects. So where the six is coming from is looking at just the top row, what effect is there, or what differences are there between these three groups. So that's one simple effects analysis. Then looking at the middle row, what difference is there between the three groups? Looking at the bottom row, what difference is there between the three groups? So that would be three simple effects analyses, looking at the effect of whatever variable is on the columns, but at each level of the other variable independently. Then we would do the same again, but going down the column. So down the first column, what effect is there or what differences do we see between the three groups? Then for the second column only, are there differences between the three groups? And for the third column only, are there differences between the groups? So we end up with one, two, three, four, five, six total simple effects analyses. As you can see, while the number of main effects depends simply on the number of independent variables that are included, one main effect can be explored for each independent variable. The number of simple effects analyses depends on the number of levels of the independent variables. This is because a separate analysis of each independent variable is conducted at each level of the other independent variable.